What are you going to watch now is a very niche video for a very limited audience and I'm probably wasting too much effort and too much time on making videos no one will watch. However, a similar tutorial doesn't seem to exist anywhere online, so someone has to do it, I guess. Anyway, there is this project on GitHub, which is called Phoenix Airline System. It's an airplane ticket management system with several functions, however, I'm not sure if it's a real software used by a real airline, or it is some kind of a college project. Anyway, the problem is, the author provided very, very sketchy instructions on how to actually install and run this web server, and even if you do follow them, you will probably fail, since his project is incomplete, and it will never run, even if you do everything by the book. Anyway, trying to launch this web server will take you through so many errors, so many failures and other issues that it seems to be one of the worst software packages I've ever seen in my life. And no one online even mentions those errors, so you have to resolve them by yourself. In this tutorial, I will show you how to correctly install this thing, and I will try to do all possible incorrect steps to show you as much errors as possible and how to resolve them. So specifically for this video, I created a virtual machine with a fresh install of Windows 11. Windows 11 Home, to be more specific. I didn't select anything during installation, I didn't remove anything, I didn't add anything. This is your vanilla system that you get immediately after you install Windows. This is to make sure we install everything needed to run this software. And I also created a folder in the root of drive C named 1, where I have downloaded everything you will need to actually install and run this Phoenix Airline system. Anyway, let's stick to the instructions that the author provided in the how to run section. So he says that we need to install Java Development Kit version 8 and also NetBeans IDE. So let's proceed with downloading Java Development Kit version 8 and installing it. The installation goes smoothly, however, it is very important that you install the 8th version of the software, since the NetBeans, which we are going to install in a moment, does not work with Java 9, for example. And that also means that you have to deny Java Next screens prompting you to update itself. Do not do that, you have to stick to Java 8 or NetBeans will not be able to work correctly. So after we installed Java, now we need to install NetBeans. So download the NetBeans package, run and install it. The instruction tells us to install all the features including the Glassfish server. So when you come to the screen where you select options, I guess we need to just install everything. The author of these instructions didn't elaborate how to actually install Glassfish server. Anyway, so far so good. However, the next step says create database Phoenix Airline DB and use this name exactly. Create where? In NetBeans or where? Anyway, there are different options. You can have MariaDB installed on your Windows or whatever. However, the easiest option is to use a software package called XAMPP. XAMPP comes as a portable software. That means it doesn't require installation. So you download the zip archive, then unpack it. It is a very important step. Do not run programs from inside zip archives or any other archives. Unpack them first. That's basic computer knowledge. So I unpacked this XAMPP folder from inside the archive, and then I created another folder named 2 in the root of the system drive and copied that folder there. So, inside XMPP folder, you have three executables. Two of them I used to start and stop the server, and the third one is the control panel. And one more thing, since this is a new Windows installation, it doesn't have any um, libraries or whatever, and XAMPP, beautiful name, requires Windows C redistributables to be run. The easiest way to install all of them is to download cumulative package of Microsoft Visual C redistributables. They come in a zip archive. Again, you have to extract it first. Do not run it from inside the archive. 
So after you extract it, go to the extracted folder, launch the install batch file, you may be prompted with a UAC prompt several times, and it will install all the necessary Visual C redistributables one by one. When you do that, XAMPP will stop showing errors and will finally run. So you may start the control panel. There you have several options. The first one is Apache Web Server, and the second one is the MySQL, which is a database. However, when you try to start any of those two, you get an error in red. I have a separate video on this exact issue and how to resolve it on my channel. If you want more details, go and watch that. But in this particular case, the problem is I have the XMPP folder inside a different folder. In your case, that may be your desktop, your documents, your downloads folder, whatever. However, by default, it is configured to be run from the root folder. So to resolve all those errors, you just need to copy the XMPP folder to the root of your system drive, drive C in this case. And as soon as I do that, I can successfully launch both Apache and MySQL from the XMPP folder. Two things to mention here. First, keep in mind that the correct way to exit XMPP control is to actually press quit. If you just close the window with the cross on the top, it will still run in background. And running control again and again and again and again will result in a gazillion of XMPP control instances in your system tray which may interfere with each other, and you will have to close them one by one. Another thing to mention is the third step of the instruction, import the SQL files to Phoenix Airline DB database using phpMyAdmin. phpMyAdmin could be accessed by pressing the admin button next to MySQL in XMPP. Keep in mind that you need to have both running, Apache Web Server and MySQL to actually be able to use phpMyAdmin. If Apache is not running, you will end up with a page not found error. And also keep in mind, you only need Apache to use this phpMyAdmin. As soon as you're done with step number three, you don't need to run Apache anymore. You only need to run MySQL database. Anyway, so far so good. So we have opened phpMyAdmin on the local host. And since this is a new Windows installation, it comes with Edge browser and it has several next screens about sync in your account or whatever, just skip them. Now the instruction tells us to import the SQL file and gives us the link to this SQL file. So I download it to the same folder. And now let's try to import it. I guess you just press import in PHP my admin. And even though it says that it was successfully finished, you still get an error no database selected. We didn't actually complete the previous step number two to create a database. So press new in the left menu and in the create database section in the database name, input the name of the database exactly as written in the instructions, Phoenix Airline DB. Create it, select it on the left, then press import again, select the same SQL file to import, and this time the database is imported successfully. And now goes the most interesting part. Download and unzip the project and open it in NetBeans. So I did download the project, which is again an archive, a RAR archive in this case, extracted it and put it to the same two folder on my drive C. Anyway, let's run NetBeans, then select open project and navigate to the project folder we have just extracted. However, as soon as you select the correct folder and press open project, you're immediately greeted with resolve project problems errors. There are four jar files that NetBeans fails to find. However, if you search the project folder for jar files, they are actually there, and the location of those files is build web webinf lib. So all you need to do is to click resolve on each of those four entries, then navigate to this folder and select the appropriate file. Make sure you're selecting the same file name. Do this four times and all the issues will be resolved and you can close this window. However, our issues are far from over. Now there is another problem. The project has a missing server problem now. I guess that is that Glassfish server the instructions were talking about. 
OK, let's add a Glassfish server. Go to Tools, select Servers, and indeed we don't have any servers, so click Add Server, select Glassfish Server, click Next, tick on the Accept the Agreement, and press Download Now. After the download completes, press Next, and then press Finish. So now we have a Glassfish server running, and we can close this window. Unfortunately, now I cannot add the project. I can click on File Open Project as much as I want. I will have this error popping out again. However, even if I close this window, the left panel which is supposed to have my projects listed says no projects open. I tried renaming the folders, doing everything else, but projects do not appear in this project tree. Apparently something is stuck in NetBeans and we need to clear its settings to resolve this issue. So what you need to do is to open your application data by typing percent updater percent in the um, file explorer address bar, then go to roaming, NetBeans, the version of your NetBeans, and inside that folder delete everything. This is the configuration files. Of course, NetBeans has to be closed. After you delete those files, launch NetBeans again, try to open the project again, and then it will start to install something to actually run this project. So indeed, something was stuck during installation while we were resolving the issues that the project had. Now, apart from the missing server problems, we also have a warning that we need to resolve this problem, even though we have installed Glassfish just now. You can do this by either right-clicking the project and selecting Resolve Missing Server Problems, or clicking the Services tab, and there, right-click on the servers and press Add Server. In the new window, select Glassfish Server, then click Next and then click Finish. Now the project does have a Glassfish Server. You may also encounter another error, and there you just select the Glassfish Server and press OK. And then you can finally click Run. It's a small green error in the top panel of NetBeans. When you click it, you will have another error. One or more projects were compiled with errors. But for now, click Run anyway. The project runs, and then the website actually opens on your local host in Edge browser in this case. However, if you try to log in with anything, the GitHub offer suggests admin as a username and admin123 as a password. As soon as you click Sign in, you get an HTTP status 500 error. And yes, of course, my SQL database is running, so the project shouldn't have any problems by requesting the user data from the database. There is just another serious problem with this project from GitHub. If you read the error carefully, you can see that JavaX serverlet is basically not found. And this is because the project that you downloaded from GitHub is incomplete. It misses certain files. Apparently, on GitHub, there is another similar project, which is also called Phoenix Airline DEA. They are very similar, I think they are clones of each other. If you download that project, inside the zip archive, you will find javaxserverlet.jar, it's the file that we are missing. So extract only this file, and you may put it anywhere you like, but I will add it to the same folder where the rest four jars are. So put it there, then open Properties by right-clicking the project, and in the Libraries section, press on the Add Jar button. After that, navigate to that lib folder, in my case, select this javaxserverlet.jar, and press Open. Now you have five libraries in your project. Press OK, run the project, ignore the error, the Phoenix Airline website opens, we may go to Admin Login by clicking the link, Enter admin as username, admin123 as the password, click sign in, and finally it works. The dashboard is available and completely operational. So this is the list of all the files you actually need to be able to run this project. And I will put download links to them on my website in the description below. I am the god of YouTube! Like, subscribe. Jingle bells.